Nigerian-born and trained physician, Dr. Stella Emanuel, is trending on social media after delivering an impassioned COVID-19 speech in the U.S. sometime last week. Speaking at a news conference in Washington, then Emanuel claimed that anti-malaria drug hydro hydroxychloroquine, zinc, and antibacterial drug Zithromax were effective cures for the virus. Emanuel, who is also the owner of the Firepower Deliverance Ministry, dismissed experts' warning that hydroxychloroquine could cause serious heart problems for COVID. COVID-19 patients, citing her experience with the use of the drug. She said she had successfully treated no fewer than 350 patients with hydroxychloroquine, zinc, and zithromas. Hydroxychloroquine, long touted by President Donald Trump as the cure for the virus, according to her. And joining us live uh, is the spokesperson from the World Health Organization Africa, Richard Mihigo Braza. And also joining us would be uh, virologist Professor Tomori. Good to have you both. Good morning, says. Do we have Richard on the line? Thank you. Uh, now, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Professor Tomori. I know that you are there. We will begin with uh, Richard. Thank you for joining us, Richard. My pleasure. Good morning. Uh, All right. Good morning. Now, one of the areas of struggle with regards to the fight against the pandemic is compliance. And if I may ask, could this be caused by the lack of consistent information dis dissemination? Well, um, I think uh, we, we have seen across the countries that uh, um, information dissemination has been quite consistent across the, uh, the board. Um, but what is currently happening is the um, uh, unprecedented length of this uh, pandemic. We've been uh, in, uh, in it from the last six months, um, and it become quite harder for uh, the general population to adhere to the non pharmaceutical measure that has been uh, put so far uh, to protect people. So it's not necessarily lack of uh, um, uh, communication around this uh, uh, non pharmaceutical measure, but uh, it's really the uh, struggle that uh, many uh, our population are going through uh, to strike a right balance between uh, um, continuing their normal life, uh, but at the same time um, observing the uh, um, essential uh, non pharmaceutical measure to prevent uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Richard, please hold your thoughts there. We will go to Professor Tomori, who is a virologist, to comment on the information around whether the virus is airborne or not. What's your thoughts, Professor? I, I think there is, for both of them, there is a realm of possibility of transmission by droplets and also by air, uh, depending on the, the volume and the strength of the uh, how you expel the virus. Uh, if you have quite a lot of virus expelled, uh, you have it in different grades of droplets. And the heavy droplets, as we know, will drop. And there are also some tiny droplets that could still float around the air. And that's the reason why WHO advises that you know you don't stay in a closed room with air conditioning circulating. Stay in an open place, and so that you know the airflow will be able to dilute whatever it is that is around. Mm -hmm. Most of the people who are in danger are those, for example, in a closed environment, especially when you're circulating with your air conditioning, then the chances of spreading droplets, tiny, much more, what we call micro droplets, is possible. So it, it is within the realm of, of transmission that you can have airborne. And mm -hmm. this is still being studied. You know, no, nobody really can say clearly exactly what the situation is. Mm -hmm. Over. I mean, it's, it's, it's helpful to know that you added that uh, this is still being studied. Now, uh, Richard, please, let's talk about this whole controversy around hydroxychloroquine. Uh, why, why does it keep being recycled? Why are we seeing it again and again? And we're, almost, uh, we're not clear what the true position is. Well, um, the WHO position has been uh, very clear um, uh, on this issue. And uh, as you know, um, uh, we are very much driven by science and evidence. Um, there, is, there was, uh, as you know, a uh, large uh, clinical trial that was conducted in many places um, to find out uh, um, the true um, uh, efficacy of that uh, drug against COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And uh, WHO, as you know, suspended the, uh, um, the clinical trial because of lack of evidence um, uh, of real benefit uh, for 
uh, hydroxychloroquine. And it's not only the uh, only uh, trial. We, we, we have now in many uh, um, uh, peer-reviewed journals that have published quite a very robust uh, um, uh, paper that's all going in the same direction, that there is no added benefit uh, of that. So um, uh, for us, it's not necessarily a new polemic. I think uh, we, we, we just uh, stand firm on the evidence that are out there. And we would like really to warn the general public um, uh, against uh, uh, such a uh, uh, flare-up of uh, um, uh, people who are claiming that uh, they've treated, they've done this and that, um, because we need absolutely to stay focused uh, on the uh, fight against COVID um, and make sure that we are using the uh, 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 evidence and science to drive our action on mm -hmm. the ground. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you that uh, we have to absolutely stay focused in the fight against COVID-19. Let's turn to uh, Professor Tomori, again, a very renowned virologist. Uh, if I ask, what, what can be done to ensure that we send out clear and consistent information, despite the fact that, you know, the knowledge about the virus is still an evolving one, even as you mentioned earlier? Yeah, thank you very much. I'd just like to make one comment about that chloroquine thing. Okay. When politicians stop dabbling in science and scientists stop dabbling in, in politics, then we will stop having the concrete conundrum. Okay. There's a role for everybody. The politicians have a role to play with the implementation of science. Scientists have to, a role to play in getting evidence for science. But when we start mixing both sides and you're dabbling on one side or the other, mm -hmm. we will continue to get <clears throat> this conundrum. Now to your question. You, yeah. you know, um, I think one of the errors a few of our countries made was in assuming that the, the most important role in I mean, uh, coronavirus control was with the government. It, it is not the government that has the most important role. It is the individual. Why? Because chloroquine is, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> coronavirus would not kill the government, <clears throat> but you kill the individual. The most important person in this thing we're talking about is me and you. Right. And therefore, when they put the role down and say, look, take care of yourself. Because if I don't get it, I don't transmit it, then we can stop the disease. But when we, we came up with the fact that, oh, this was a government business, and then we made that mistake. And I think our governments, too, were not that clear enough in making sure that they define who had the more important role in this control. It is the people. It is you and me. That, and that's why all those uh, non-pharmaceutical things that uh, uh, Richard mentioned become very, very important. See the way we've done it in this country. We've not really had a really good lockdown. We've not locked down. We've broken all the rules. People have broken all the rules. And so I think the important thing is that as the disease evolves, mm -hmm. we keep learning. And sometimes they keep accusing WHO of flipping, flopping. No, WHO is working on evidence. And when he has enough evidence, it, it changes his mind. Only a wise man does that. When you have the convincing evidence, you move away to that one. When we started, who knew about... Uh, uh, COVID uh, causing problem with smelling or taste. It was all like fever, this type of thing. But as it went on, we found more things about it. So as more information comes out, we should let people know, leave no gap at all about the disease. Give all the information to the people. The people are wise enough to take care of themselves. And that's, I think, the message that we need to get on. Get the right message, the full message to the people and make them, let the people realize that they are the more important people in this control of this disease, much more important than my president and my, my minister or than anybody who is in charge of that thing. It yeah. is me that's the more important person. Over. Yeah. All right, before I let you go, Professor uh, Tamari, what's your thoughts on, you know, the whole controversy about what uh, Dr. Emmanuel is claiming on hydroxychloroquine being the cure for COVID-19? I think uh, Richard has, mentioned, has answered that question. But for me, and that's why I said the word that when we scientists stop dabbling in politics and politicians start dabbling in science, then we won't have the confusion we're getting. This is probably the first time we're getting this type of situation. Businessmen, politicians, everybody is getting involved in chloroquine. And, uh, and that's where the problem is. But, uh, so what I think about this is a personal opinion about that. I think she should follow what others say. So all of the things she has said, I've tested 350 people, I've done this and that, that. Show us in evidence, publish data. Not I did this, I did that. There is evidence there. Can people read it? That's the problem. That, that, this, that's the issue. And when you mix that with what she has done with religion, then you're compounding the problem and you get a chloroquine conundrum, as I call it.
All right. And lastly, now to Dr. Richard. Um, Dr. Richard, I believe you can hear me, and you also have heard um, a professor there. In the midst of all that is happening, everyone is looking up to uh, World Health Organization to give the answer. What are you most hopeful about in this fight against COVID-19? Well, I would like first to come back to what Professor Tomori have said. Um, we will won this uh, fight against COVID when everybody will play really its role, uh, making sure that uh, uh, the disease may start, but most importantly, could stop at the individual uh, level. So we are seeing more and more uh, communities, people, countries taking the right uh, uh, measure to prevent this disease. And I think we're in the right direction. With regard to the uh, future, I think um, clearly we are hoping that uh, a vaccine uh, could be something that uh, could uh, really be a game changer in this uh, uh, disease. There are um, uh, very uh, positive uh, uh, results that are coming out uh, with uh, several candidate vaccines that are currently being on clinical trial. Um, we hope that um, sometime probably early next year, uh, we may uh, uh, find some uh, uh, vaccine that could work. And uh, this could be something that really will make the difference in uh, um, uh, our lives. And trying, trying to um, uh, getting us back to what we call the, new, the normal life. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very important to realize that we are not going to go to the uh, old time if really we are not putting in place the right measure to uh, prevent ourselves, to prevent our families, to prevent our communities. And uh, it's only that way that we can really um, uh, uh, have a, a, a final say against this uh, uh, virus. All right. Uh, we need our normal life back, indeed. I want to say thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Richard Mihigo of the World Health Organization, spokesman for Africa region, and of course, very seasoned virologist, Professor Tomori, uh, for your contributions. Thank you so very much. And both of you do keep safe out there.